Okay. Well, hello. Uh, my name is Andrew Wood. I work with Network for Clean Air. Um, today's presentation at the Hub Westminster is digital, analog, and active approaches to better air quality, including the air quality egg. And if you're not familiar with the air quality egg, then I'll say a bit about that. So this is the structure of um, talk this evening. So the first part is going to be about analog technologies, and then we'll talk about digital technologies, so that's the air quality egg, etc. And analog technologies, uh, I'm going to mostly be talking about gas diffusion tubes. And uh, I'm not going to talk about the health effects of air pollution today. I'm just going to talk about this uh, one, these technologies and these approaches to measuring air pollution and what air quality. And after I've spoken, given an introduction, then Jonathan Callaway from the Putney Society is going to speak and tell us about a project in Putney where they used gas diffusion tubes uh, in their campaigning for better air quality with a good outcome. And so after each of these parts, then we'll have a Q&A session. Just can ask questions and uh, I think it'll be quite informal. It's a good, good location for that. And then maybe we'll have a break, and then we'll do the second part, um, which is about digital technologies and the air quality egg. And Jason here has an air quality egg. So um, I think uh, if we can have a bit of dialogue and discussion about that, that would be good. And we can have a Q&A as well. Right. One thing I should say is, apologies for the quality of these slides. Um, I'll tell you why they're not fantastically colourful another time. Okay, so this is a gas diffusion tube. It's a plastic tube. It's about seven centimeters long. It's about uh, just over a centimeter in diameter. So it's a bit bigger than your, than your finger, but not that much. Uh, it's clear plastic. And this is the definition of uh, diffusion tube technology. It's an uh, an example of an analog technology. So you don't need to fit any batteries in this. Uh, in fact, generally people wouldn't think about this as an analog technology. It's only when we've had digital air quality monitors that we could perhaps think of it in those terms. So if I said to you, uh, what do you call photographic cameras that aren't digital, then you perhaps would say anything. <laughs> yeah, you might say they're analog, you say they're film, but most people wouldn't say, I'm using an analog camera, but in effect, that's what the technology is. And uh, it's quite a good an analogy uh, to, to look at this and think of it a bit like um, film camera, because here we're exposing this tube to the air could be the outside air, could be inside air. People have even worn those badges. But primarily, it's used to measure outdoor ambient air. So what the air is generally like rather than hot spots. And uh, this is the definition which is taken from DEFRA's guidance on using these particular tubes for measuring di nitrogen dioxide. So it's uh, passive samplers, small plastic tubes. They have a chemical reagent that changes uh, in the presence of nitrogen dioxide and that's it's exposed so it's a bit like a, a film would be exposed to light it changes when it interacts with its environment and that allows you to measure the concentration of pollution so most of these pictures are actually taken out of the DEFRA manual which is called uh, diffusion tubes for ambient NO2 monitoring practical guidance for laboratories and users and it's on the DEFRA website if you want to have a look at that. So, it's, um, when you actually receive them from the laboratory, because they're supplied uh, by the laboratory, then they have a cap on either end, because the, the uh, reagent is inside the tube. And then to start the exposure, you simply remove one of the caps, and then you mount it. So here we are, there's, a, there's often a, a clip which holds it in place 
and there's some guidance about where you should mount it, like not on vegetation and convenient things in the streetscape are things like lamp posts or sign posts etc. So uh, it's very easy to set up. They're relatively cheap so if they get damaged then you've not lost much. But uh, when you've finished the exposure you put the cap back on, send it to the laboratory and then they tell you the reading. So it's, it's very simple. It's a bit like you send your film away to the laboratory to be developed. You send it to the lab, which supplied you with a tube usually, and they tell you what the reading is. So it's, it's a very easy technology to use. So, I mean, here's the components. This is the plastic tube. You've got uh, the caps at either end. Uh, for some reason, um, it's always the white cap you remove. They've standardized on the white cap is the one you remove to expose the tube. And there's uh, this metal gorse, or grids as they're known, and those are soaked in um, a chemical which changes in the presence of nitrogen oxide. So it's actually this chemical here, triethylamine TEA. Uh, don't ask me any more about it than that. <laughs> but it, it reacts to nitrogen dioxide, and uh, depending on the exposure, time, depending on the levels of the pollutants, then that can be used to determine um, what the ambient pollution level for nitrogen dioxide is. So it's quite simple, really. When you send it back to the lab, they put it into a machine. And uh, this is actually a machine which is commercially used. Um, it's called colometric analysis. So the machine gun here, um, actually they're loaded uh, first of all, you have to pipette or, um, the, uh, a solution into each tube. So the tube itself is a carrier for a solution and the chemical uh, on the mesh will have um, changed and will go into solution. And uh, then you can put it in the machine and it can read it. It can read, uh, it, it will give you an analysis um, by, it works like this. Uh, the the tubes are clear. They put in the colorimetric analysis means that there's a light source which is a particular wavelength. They divide the light source into two. Half of it goes through the tube or into the tube and out. And um, because of the color of the solution, then it will stop some of the light. And then the other side, the other half, which is the original source, the level of the original source, you can compare the two and that will give you a figure. And that's the concentration of the reagent that's in the solution. So that is analogous to the level of nitrogen oxide. So that's, that's the process. But you can see here, these are the trays where they load them in and then it goes through the machine and it's interfaced to a computer and so you get a reading. Uh, and they happen to call it a segmented flow analyzer, I think simply because you can separate these parts and there's probably other uh, machinery that you need as well. But uh, it's typically what it looks like. It's not very really exciting, is it? Um, and then back from the lab you get uh, this reading uh, of the concentrations of nitrogen dioxide, so you have to tell them how long you exposed it for, the, the actual tube. And then you need to apply a bias, so uh, which is simply a subtracting um, uh, a certain concentration in the air, and that gives you a final reading, what, what the level of nitrogen dioxide is. So that's the technology. Um, so it's very simple. Uh, and tube costs maybe six pounds each. Um, they recommend you put the tubes up for uh, somewhere between four and six weeks, although they can stay up for ten weeks. And um, they do have a shelf life, uh, although it's not, not that long. But Jonathan can tell us a bit more about your experience of using them. Maybe. 
So that's a quick introduction to the analog technology of gas diffusion tubes.